Welcome to another episode of R2D2 Time. On this episode, I'm going to show you how I made these. My hollow projectors. Check it out. Hello, Astromech Builders. Uh, I just wanted to show you how far I've gotten on my hollow projectors. Uh, these are the Bob C. Hollows, and they came with um, the shrouds, the hollow projector, and the lens inside, and as well as uh, a cap that goes onto this threaded uh, area right here. Um, what I've done so far is I've um, printed off these plates that hold the servos, and these plates I got from a builder a helmet and he provided those on the astromech site and I had to modify them in Fusion 360 to accept the whole spacing for these shrouds because they were a little bit different and then um, they matched up with um, these two shrouds right here. Uh, inside the shrouds I put the breathe right connectors so that there's no slop in this play. Uh, they rotate pretty easily on those connectors or, or that those pads. Um, and um, what I've done is I put a captive stud in here, which is a 3 8 inch 440 captive stud. Then I put an aluminum 1 inch spacer 440 fitting, and then a 440 screw that holds this all together. And this is, uh, I've labeled them, this is the front hollow projector. And I put my uh, servos in, I've numbered the servos 1 and 2. So that's what they look like, and uh, on to the inserts for these. I'll just show you what I did with those. So <clears throat> here is um, one of the inserts. Um, it's got a 3D printed um, plate that goes onto the screw mount here, and then it's got an aluminum tube that goes inside, and then a 3D printed housing to hold the slip ring. So that I could spin this around and it never gets um, tangled up. All the wires um, go through and I put them onto a servo connector for now. I'm not sure about the length yet. <clears throat> and then it goes through this hole, through that hole right in there. And then I have made a mount for my NeoPixel ring. So this gets all screwed on. You can see inside of there, there is a... Um, M4 bolt and it goes all the way through into the nut inside that holds this whole sandwich this whole thing together and this is a NeoPixel uh, 7 segment one uh, that the filthy sketch um, asked for and I just coiled up all the extra wires because this slip ring comes with six wires we only need three and so I just coiled them up in case I ever need to uh, one of them breaks or something I have uh, extras in there and then to diffuse this, I made a cap, and it's just got um, some foam backing for things that I put on top of 3D printed uh, housing, and it gets um, gl um, glued onto the outer ring there. So it looks like uh, looks like this when it's finished. And then this whole thing gets screwed into here. Like that. So you have your servo wires and you have your NeoPixel wire and um, it's ready to be installed. Now the next phase for that is actually putting my springs in. So here's one that's completed. Uh, usually what guys are doing is they're just putting a spring from here to here. A uh, fairly thick one. It has to be actually the right diameter and tension. And I just couldn't find any, so I took uh, Max Stang's idea of using um, piano wire for linkages, and I just bent it. And um, I used some Dupont, or sorry, Dubro uh, connectors on the ends here to hold them in. So now when I when I move this, it's got a little bit of play here, so you can you can actually grab the hollow projector from the outside. If kids grab that, they can move it around. And they're not affecting the servos at all. But then uh, the servos still have enough tension to operate the hull projector properly. So uh, that's what it looks like so far. 
and that you can see inside of there the foam in there might go with two layers of foam I'm not sure but I'll try that out for now so um, what I'm going to do next is program in all the limits. I'm going to write down all the limits for each servo for each hollow projector and put that into the sketch and um, see how it works. Okay, here's an edit. Um, I did not like the way I had done the uh, springs here with the piano wire. So um, looking back at my notes, Max Stang's way of doing this with uh, the little... Um, Pen springs here is way better, have more control over it. So I just straightened out the piano wire and I connected them like I'm going to connect my servos for my panels. And basically it's these um, easy connectors from Dubro as well as um, collars, um, these brass call these collars right here. So we just have piano wire going through there. I cut a spring in half. I put half on this side and half on this side. And I have these tiny little um, bushings that I um, resin printed. And they just kind of hold the spring in place. And uh, it works way better. I've got my dual um, servo control here. So that way and that way. So it still gives you flexibility in here. A um, little bit less flexibility, but a lot more control over each servo and the tension on it all. So I'm just going to redo the other two and then set up my limits. Okay guys, I've got uh, my hollow projectors mounted on this temporary stand. Uh, I've got the um, the front, the top, and the rear, and they're just functioning right now. I've got them hooked up to my Mega right here on my old board that was my proof of concept board. Got the wire running down onto these hollow projectors with the serial control, and just have my Xbox remote here. Um, Xbox controller. I'll just turn these around so you can see the back of them. So everything seems like it's functioning properly. I've got all the minimum and maximum uh, servo limits programmed in. What I did is, I'll just show you on the computer here, I have made a chart that just shows the min and max. The yellow is the front, green are the rear, and the top is in this um, blue color. Uh, this is for my handbook that I'm making. And then I just transferred those numbers into the sketch. So <clears throat> I'm just do, I just programmed in a few functions here. So here's a, a little short circuit. Uh, routine. And um, the Leia sketch is right there that goes on for a while so I'll just change it out I also have a little uh, sequence routine here I'll just show you just this is all just for testing purposes so um, for green light blue and a purpley color and then I got a little wag in here with another button control So, seems like it's working pretty good. Um, I can install these once my dome is ready. Dome's not ready yet. i got to do all the panels first. thought I'd put this in last. And the way I'm going to install them are with some storm door clips. So, that's Max Thang's uh, method of mounting them. I'll just show you what those look like. So, storm door clips look like that. It took me a while to get in Canada, but I ordered a mess of them, and then I'm going to put them in with captive studs, number 10 captive studs. So the captive stud will go through the um, inner dome, and then this is going to hook on like that, and um, there's going to be a cap lock nut uh, on that side. So there'll be three or four of these all the way around. That way you can just loosen the, the nut, take the whole hollow projector out as one unit, or rotate it a bit, uh, for some wiggle room in case you need to.